And the people say, Lord, amen. amen. Call these prophetic words for 2014. It's positioning you in the preparation to fulfill purpose. This phase in the process is repositioning. I'll explain that. You see, for a long time, God has always used the life of Joseph to speak into our hearts in this ministry. Say amen. He has used the life of Joseph to show us the time of preparation. Everybody say preparation. I don't know if you know at age 17 or so, Joseph had the dream of the future. Is that not true? He saw himself standing and others were bowing. But he didn't understand what he would go through to get there. So when this ministry was birthed, God showed that he wanted to cause there to be an influence in the nations of the earth through this ministry. Can I hear an amen? But we didn't know what we were going to go through to get there. (laughs) So there's been a lot of training, a lot of internal training, a lot of character development, a lot of molding, a lot of training, and the training will continue. But God is beginning to say that the time is coming where he wants to reposition you to affect the nations. It's something that only God could do. I mean, there was no way Joseph could have figured things out in his own wild, wild imagination. So like Joseph, we're coming into new positions. If you believe that, say loud amen. amen. You need a determined development and dedication to fulfill destiny. Now, so let's look at the scriptures. It's a year of continuous favor and positioning. Amen. I say it's a year of continuous favor and what? Positioning. You see, in spite of what Joseph went through, God's favor was upon Joseph. Do you know that? Every time he did something, the Bible says he was promoted and all that. And when Potiphar's wife lied against him and he found himself in prison, how many of you know that it wasn't long before Joseph became the head of the prison people there? <laughs> because God's favor was resting upon Joseph. Say amen. amen. But Joseph is coming out of the prison and he's going to be right under Pharaoh and he's going to influence the entire nation of Egypt because of God's call upon his life. Now that's where we're getting into in 2014. That's where we're getting into. A repositioning to affect the nations of the earth. How many of you know that Joseph not only affected Egypt, he affected the Jews too. He affected the known world in that time. Because he was rightly positioned. God had developed his character, developed his gifting, developed him in service and all of that. And he came to the position where the entire known developed world in his time would listen to the wisdom of God through Joseph. That's what God's saying. Are you ready for this? Let's turn Bible to Isaiah 49. Everybody say continuous favor favor. and positioning. This is talking about our corporate destiny now, not just individuals, but as individuals, you can tap into it. Say loud, amen. Amen. Isaiah 49. Well, let's look at Isaiah 33 first. Let's look at some verse there. In Isaiah 33, it says in verse 6, it says, Wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of your times and the strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. What have we been dealing with in this house? Wisdom and knowledge. Wisdom and knowledge will be the stability of your times. We're in very unstable times right now. And the Bible says wisdom and knowledge shall be what? The stability of your time. So those of us who are connected to this house, we are privileged to have wisdom and knowledge and we can be stable in these times. Can I hear a loud amen? amen? And the strength of salvation, the fear of the Lord, is its treasure. So I just want to say that to you, that that's one of the anchor verses for this house. That wisdom and knowledge will be the stability of your times. In other words, no matter the season you go into, wisdom and knowledge will give you stability. Wisdom and knowledge will give you stability. Then, In other words, you need to allow wisdom and knowledge to give you stability. (laughs) Not allow your heart to be moved to and fro by the disturbances you hear around you, but allow wisdom and knowledge to give you stability. Say amen. Amen. So let's now go to Isaiah 49, and then we read a few verses there as well. In Isaiah 49, let's take it from verse 1. It says, Listen, O coastlands, to me, and take it, you peoples from afar. The Lord has called me from the womb, and from the matrix of my mother, he has made mention of my name. And he has made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand, he has hidden me, and made me a polished shaft. In his quiver, he has hidden me. That verse tells you that God has been preparing you, and hiding you, and sharpening your character. 
Say amen. amen. It says he has made me a polished shaft. In his quiver, he has hidden me. Now, what you should understand is that like an arrow, God has an assignment for each person. Say amen. amen. When an arrow's shaft is polished and is smooth and is straight, when God sends that arrow, it goes to the direction it was sent. So when your character has not been built, you can't fulfill the accurate assignment that God has called you to fulfill. So that's what that scripture is saying. And this is part of the things that in the, in the economy of God, what is God saying? What's God doing? What's God thinking about? What is, he, what's, what, what is his program? His program is that he's preparing you for the future that he has prepared for you. He's positioning you to fulfill purpose. And whatever you are going through right now with the lessons you're learning from wisdom and knowledge and the things you're learning on the pulpit that God is using his vessels, to, his servants to speak to you, you begin to position yourself correctly. For instance, when you understand that the words of your mouth carry weight. Say amen. amen. So you won't give in to the enemy. You won't say what he wants you to say. You will say what God has said. And with that, you are allowing wisdom and knowledge to give you stability. How many of you know that this year, the nations, the unrest in the nations will increase? Take note of that. How many of you see the unrest that has happened this year, 2013? I mean, it has been unprecedented. Is that not true? Is it Syria? Is it Egypt? Just think about the whole world and the unrest. Well, these are signs of the end times. These are the signs that tell us that what the Bible says is coming to pass. Well, do you know that there are churches being planted in Egypt and Syria as we speak? Because people are beginning to lose hope in some things and they are beginning to realize, hey, what the Bible says is actually true. Nation will rise against nation. I mean, people against one another, ethnic groups against one another, and they are killing themselves. And you wonder, what kind of spirit is this? That there's hardly any day in the news you wouldn't hear that somebody died somewhere. Is it not true? Now, these are the unstable times we are in. But what is God doing in these times? What is God doing in this time? Does he have a program? Yes. Is he, is he planning to execute his plans and purposes? Yes. Sin has reached a point where it is pouring out his wrath. Things are happening all over the world. But God's people are still on the earth today. And they are still being prepared for what future God has for them. I believe we're going to see the outbreak of God's power like never before this coming year. I believe it's going to be an outbreak of his power. But it's going to be those who he has prepared. Say loud, amen. Amen. That's why the enemy is fighting tooth and nail. He wants to discredit the word of God. He wants to discredit the people of God. He wants to make it look like there's no future for people in God again. That's why we sing the songs that we've been singing and praying, the kind of prayer we're praying. My glory and the lifter up of my head. I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and he heard me out of his holy hill. This is not a time to despair. This is a time to guard your heart with all diligence, because out of your heart comes the issues of life. This is not a time to let the news filter in there and destroy your defense in the spirit world. How many of you know we have a defense? The faith that we have is a defense. The angels that God has given us to watch over us, they are our defenders. Say amen. My wife was sharing with us just a minute ago about Psalm 91. It says, a thousand will fall on this side, 10,000, and none of it will come near me. Well, you can be so holy and say, oh God, why me? But you have a covenant with God. Say amen. And that covenant is a covenant of protection. It's a covenant of provision. Are you ready for this? It's a covenant of promotion. Amen. If you believe it, say loud, amen. amen. <laughs> it's a covenant of protection, Psalm 91. It's a covenant of provision, Psalm 103. It's a covenant of promotion. So when we break bread at the end of all of this, today, as we step into the new year, I want you to take it with the consciousness that you have a covenant with God through the blood of Jesus Christ. And God watches over his word to perform it. It's not, a, it's not on break. God is not on break because things are going wrong. Listen, people have gone live their lives without God for too long. So there's a wake-up call right now around the world that something is wrong. And the whole world is resonating. There's a vibration as it were going through the entire universe. And everybody's getting a wake-up call. It's time to go back to the God of Israel. Well, it's going to be hard for some people to believe that, but that's what's going to happen. Say amen. Amen. 
All right, so let's just pick a few more verses. You can read the whole chapter of, Psalm, uh, of Isaiah 49. It says, um, verse 3 says, And he said to me, You are my servant, O Israel, in whom I will be glorified. And I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing and in vain. Yet surely my just reward is with the Lord and my work with my God. And now the Lord says, Who formed me from the womb to be his servant? To bring Jacob back to him, so that Israel is gathered to him. For I shall be glorious in the eyes of the Lord, and my God shall be my strength. Indeed, he says, it is too small a thing that it should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserved ones of Israel. I will also give you as a light to the Gentiles, and you shall be my salvation to the ends of the earth. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? Do you believe that? That's what God is saying. It's saying that you have labored and it looks like you haven't seen anything for your labor, but don't worry. My plans for you have not changed. <laughs> Say loud, amen. amen. I will give you as a light to the Gentiles that you will be my salvation to the ends of the earth. Thus says the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel, thy Holy One, their Holy One, to whom man despises to him, whom man despises to him, whom the nation abhors, to the servant of rulers, kings shall see and arise, princes shall also, also shall worship, because the Lord who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel, he has chosen you. Thus says the Lord, in acceptance of them I have heard you, in the day of salvation I have helped you. I will preserve you and give you as a covenant to the people to restore the earth, to cause them to inherit the desolate heritages, that you may say to the prisoners, go forth, and to those who are in darkness, show yourselves. They shall feed along the roads, and their pastures shall be on, the, on all desolate heights. They shall neither hunger nor thirst, neither heat nor sun shall strike them. For he who has mercy on them will lead them, even by the springs of water, he will guide them. Say amen. amen. Skip to Psalm uh, verse 13. Sing, O heavens, be joyful, O earth, and break forth into singing. Break out in singing, O mountains, for the Lord has comforted his people and will have mercy on his afflicted. Say loud, Amen. amen. What I'm looking at here is that throughout the whole of this chapter, there are various facets of it that God has used to say things to us so we see the context in which we are in the, in the operation of God. We see the context that there's something God wants to do, but there are things that are yet to be put in place for them to come to pass. And those things are being put in place right now. I said those things are being put in place right now. I said those things are being put in place right now. Verse 22 says, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will lift my hand in an oath to the nations and set up my standard for the people. They shall bring your sons in their arms and your daughters shall be carried on their shoulders. Kings shall be your foster fathers and their queens your nursing mothers. They shall bow down to you with their faces to the earth and lick the dust of your feet. Then you will know that I am the Lord, for they shall not be ashamed who wait for me. Are you ready to wait for him? Are you ready to wait for him? I just wanted to show you that as you meditate through verse, um, chapter 49, you find a lot of uh, things. Now, specifically, these words were spoken to the nation of Israel. But God has a way of taking things that he spoke in the past and activating them in the hearts of people to show you the place you are in God's program. Can I hear an amen? And of course, in Isaiah 42, when we talk about single barren, how many of you know that was a prophetic one? In Isaiah 40, 40, 54, verse 2, verse 1, says, Sing, O barren, say amen. And then in verse 2, he says, Enlarge the place of your tent. Is somebody hearing me? This is a prophetic word to you now. Enlarge the place what? And let them stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. Do not spare. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes. You shall expand to the right and to the left, and your descendants will inherit the nations and make the desolate places inhabited. Do not fear, for you shall not be ashamed. You know what this calls for? Bold faith actions. Whether you're going to stay, you know what, this year, whatever your plans were, just double it. Yeah. Say loud, amen. Yeah. <laughs> whatever your plans were, just do what? Yeah. And you may not still catch up with what God wants to do. That's the truth. It says, enlarge the place of your tents. Let them stretch out the curtains of your dwelling. Do not spare. Lengthen your cords. And he went on straight to hit the thing that will cause you to stop. He says, do not fear, for you will not be ashamed. That's what will stop you from enlarging your coast. Do not fear, you will not be ashamed, neither be disgraced, for you will not be put to shame. You will forget the shame of your youth, and you will remember the reproach of your widowhood, and you will not remember the reproach of your youth anymore. Say aloud, amen. amen. I want you to know this is God's word to you, that it's time to enlarge your coast. It's time for me to look at this church and say, I call you a 500-member church. Yeah. 
That's how unreal it sounds. Because you look at yourself, what, what, what do you say? If I call you 1,000, then you'll be shocked. Where would you put them? I don't know, too. Say amen, somebody. Amen. What this is asking us to do is to trust God and not look to ourselves and our limitations, but to believe God. You know what I've learned over the years is that I, 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 I believe God for things and I have nothing to lose. Say amen. Because, you see, no, no, no venture, no success. If you don't venture out into something, there's nothing you will achieve. But when you venture out, you venture out knowing that God is with you. You venture out knowing that you are entering into the purposes of God for your life. Can I hear a loud amen? amen. I mean, at the end of this year, one of, at the end of 2014, I want to look back and say that, like Joseph, we've come into a place of influence where the nations are responding to the wisdom of God. Amen. That is where we're going. The nations are responding to the wisdom of God. You know how Pharaoh wasn't a rich man before Joseph came on the scene. It was the wisdom of God in the, wise, in the life of Joseph that brought wealth for Pharaoh. Some of you don't know that. <laughs> it's the wisdom of God that brought wealth for Pharaoh. Why? Because Joseph was the one who interpreted the dream. I think it was my wife that was sharing with us that what if Joseph didn't interpret the dream and he had seven years of plenty and there was no interpretation, they just... What would have happened to them? They would have wasted the seven years of plenty, not kept anything aside. And when the seven years of lack will come, they will starve almost to death. You know what's going on on the earth today? There are seasons that are coming upon us. Say amen. The season of increase is coming. But it takes the people who have been prepared in the wisdom of God to know how to handle the increase when it comes so that they can use the increase to be positioned correctly so that when the lack begins to come, they will have the resources to meet the needs of people. At that time, they will have to hear the wisdom of God from them. Is somebody hearing me? So this is why God in his preparation wants his people to understand what he's doing. Hello, somebody. So don't be afraid when things begin to happen to you and you get promoted and all that. Don't get into the worldly mindset and wasting everything that comes your way. Can I hear an amen? amen. Don't get into that mindset and say, you know what, my mates are doing this. Let me go do that. No, understand that you are a Joseph in the making and the wisdom of God is being doled out to you so that you can be positioned to influence nations better than you would have without the hand of God upon your life. Is somebody hearing me here? So it's time to arise, it's time to shine. The unrest and the nations will increase, but it's time to arise and shine. Isaiah 60 verse 1 says, Arise and shine for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. There will be gross darkness upon the people of the earth. So they don't get flustered at all. Things you will hear them happening right, left, and center, but you have a covenant with God. You will hear things happening anywhere you're going, but please, whenever you're going anywhere, double check with heaven before you move. And I hear an amen. amen. <laughs> Double check with what? Amen. You see, let heaven lead you. Don't, Lord, I want to travel. How do you see this? You say, okay, don't go there this time. Because he knows what's going to happen there. Because you have a covenant with him. And he's going to protect you from that evil. But you always amen. double check with heaven. Say amen. amen. So we're in that season. We're moving more and more into the season of harvest. What does that mean? In the, end, in the Bible, in Matthew 24, the Bible says that the end of the age is a season of harvest. Do you know that this is the greatest harvest time that we can have on earth today? You would be shocked that some things are happening in the world today that are battling and defeating and dismantling some strongholds that have been held on for too long. You, can I give you some examples? For instance, some people believe that God doesn't exist, right? Yeah. How many of you think that the calamities going on around the world can give them a second thought? If God doesn't exist, then how come <laughs> somebody must be existing somewhere <laughs> for these people to be destroying themselves with such whatever? That means that they, if they don't believe God exists, they will believe that Satan exists. And if they believe Satan exists, then there must be a counterforce. God has to be, exist. <laughs> and you'll be shocked at the dismantling. Even the economic failures that you see around you today, they are dismantling some economic strongholds in certain circles, preparing the world to hear the gospel. But may the people of God be prepared to give the gospel, not just with their words, but with their lifestyle, and the time comes. 
This is where we are in the timetable of God right now. We're in the time when things have been dismantled. That's the timetable of God. Things have been dismantled everywhere. Everything you have held on to before has been dismantled. Have you heard in the Bible it says everything that can shake will be shaken? That's what's going on. (laughs) Everything is shaking. But you know what is going to stand? The kingdom of God. The unshakable kingdom of God is going to stand. So if you are hooked up to the kingdom of God, stay hooked up. Because that's what's not going to shake. But the kingdom of God does not appear in the natural. It first of all appears on the inside of you. That's why the wisdom and knowledge of God will give you stability. Where is that stability coming from? The stability of God's kingdom, the unshakable kingdom of God. That's where the stability is. Can I hear an amen? amen. So when you understand what's going on, everything is being shaken right now. Economic uh, plants are shaking. Uh, just name anything. Everything is shaking. But the kingdom of God is standing. And where is that kingdom? Inside you. The kingdom is not outside you. It's inside you. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Say amen. amen. When he says, count it all joy, saying, let the kingdom be ruling over your trials rather than let your trials dominate your life. That's why he says, count it all joy. Why? Joy is part of the kingdom. May the Lord grant you understanding. Amen. Let's turn our Bibles to Isaiah 24. Sorry, Matthew 24 this time. Matthew 24. Just giving you a picture of the timetable of God we're in so that we get the gist of it. From verse 4, Jesus answered and said, well, verse 3 says, Now he sat, as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, saying, I'm the Christ, and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For a nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be what? Famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Is that happening? They're the beginning of what? So sorrows are going to continue. Unfortunately. And they will deliver you up to tribulation, kill you, and they shall be, you shall be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will be offended and will betray one another and will hate one another. That's why Satan is working hard to ensure there is hatred and bitterness in the church. Because when the enemy strikes, he's going to strike on every side. He's going to strike killing some. The people who are in Syria, they're being killed as Christians. Is that not true? Yeah. Egypt, they're being killed as Christians right now. But within the church, where the church does not have people killing them, offenses are growing in the hearts of people. Yeah. You, are you see what I'm saying here? Yeah. That's what the enemy is doing. And many will be offended and will betray one another and will hate one another. And many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. Because lawlessness will abound and, love of many, and the, that the, love, sorry, the love of many will grow cold because lawlessness will abound. But he who endures to the end shall be what? And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, then the end will come. So in the midst of all this trouble, it will still be preached. Can I hear an amen? <laughs> if you thought it was all bread and butter Christianity, think well. In the midst of all this trouble, the gospel will still be preached and then the end will come. Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place, whoever reads, let him understand. Then let those who are in Judea flee and all of that. Amen? <laughs> now let's skip on. It says, um, where did it say? The harvest is the end of the age. Okay, I think it's another place. The gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. In other words, Syria will still hear the gospel. Egypt will still hear the gospel. Both in the lifestyle of Christians there and through the preaching of the gospel, the gospel will still be preached. Say amen. Amen. Say loud amen. Amen. So what should we then do as believers? Well, let's get ready for the harvest. Harvest of nations, harvest of souls. What is going to be the frontier that will take over the marketplace. Let me inform you now that you working, you're not a preacher, you are working as a Christian in the marketplace. Anywhere you are is marketplace. You are going to be a witness for God in the marketplace. 
You're not going to just say church alone. You're going to carry the kingdom into the marketplace. You're going to leave out the kingdom. You're going to preach the kingdom. And you're going to demonstrate the kingdom in the marketplace. Because that's where the enemy is using as his last frontier. How many of you know that money is the dominating factor in the whole world today? Whether it's politics, military. If you hear that there's any war anywhere, it's because somebody's making money out of that war. Yeah. Do you know that? Because you wonder where these people get ammunition from. Is that not true? You can tell that they themselves can't afford the ammunition. So how, who is equipping them? Somebody is getting enriched. That's why the wars never end. Somebody is supplying guns, bombs, Am I talking here? So you must understand that the making of money is the frontier that Satan has pitched his tent and it will influence who becomes president in any country. It will influence what happens in any country because making of the money is where the real battle is. Now all of us who are into one work or the other, one business or the other, we are God's agents in the marketplace. Am I talking here? And you're going to demonstrate kingdom in that place. That's the frontier. That's the frontier. Once we can understand that and take the battle to the gates of the enemy, then we're going to see the kingdom of God established in the marketplace. Can I hear a loud amen? Amen. How many of you know that if people have the influence and the money, they can influence nations for God? Do you know that? If you have a bundle of believers today who have the means, they can tell Sean that, you know, one will come and bless you and we want you to respect our gospel. You know, the doors of nations will open like this and the gospel will come in. That's exactly what Islam is using right now. And God is going to use that to spread the gospel as well. Can I hear a loud amen? amen? So those of you who are in business right now, the season has come for you to wake up to your spirituality. The season has come for you to wake up with your responsibility to take the gospel of the kingdom into the marketplace. He that hath an ear. I said he that hath an ear. Turn with me to Matthew 13 as we begin to round up this. Matthew 13. Verse 39. It says, the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Like it's taken from verse 38. The field is the world. The good seeds are the sons of the kingdom, but the tares are the sons of the wicked one. The enemy who sowed them is the devil, and the harvest is the end of the age. Reapers are the angels. Therefore, as the tares are gathered and burned in fire, so will be the end of this age. Son of man will send out his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and who practice lawlessness, and all of that. Now, let's also turn to... I think it's Joel chapter 3. Let's look at Joel chapter 3, and then we'll begin to bring it to a close. Joel is in the Old Testament. I hope you know that. And it's after Hosea, I think. Yes. Joel chapter 3, from verse 12. It says, Let all the nations be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. For there I will sit to judge all the surrounding nations. Put in the sickle for the harvest is ripe. Can I hear an amen? Amen. So put in the sickle for the harvest is ripe. Come, go down. For the winepress is full. The vats overflow for their wickedness is great. Multitudes in the multitudes in the valley of decision. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. The sun and moon will grow dark and the stars will diminish their brightness. Hello somebody. That tells me that we are in the day where the harvest, first of all in Matthew 13 that we read, it said the end of the age is the harvest. Is that true? Then in this chapter, in Joel 2, 3, it says the nations are awakened, they are up in the valley of Jehoshaphat, and it says the harvest is ripe, for the wine press is full. Now what it tells me is that there will be multitudes right now in the valley of decision. Remember when Jesus was on earth, he said, you said the harvest is coming in three months or whatever months, but I said, look now, the harvest is ripe. Now I'm telling you now, that because of the unrest going on in the world today, the harvest is more ripe than it was before. Can I hear an amen? 
I said the harvest is more ripe than it was before. Now, it takes you believing that to step out. If you don't believe that, you will allow the fear, the uncertainty, and the despair to affect you, and you won't know that the harvest is truly ripe. So hear me loud and clear, the harvest is ripe. Say amen. amen. The end of the age is the harvest. As we commit to God to bring in the harvest, he will give the strategies. And that's the way it works. As we commit to God to bring in the harvest, he will give us the strategies. The marketplace is the place where the harvest is really ripe, but people don't know that. We are going to dethrone mammon in the marketplace. You see, mammon has dominated the marketplace for too long. We're going to dethrone mammon in the marketplace. You see, what we need to understand is Satan has attacked all the regions of the earth. Everything, education, he attacked it. Hospital or whatever, healthcare, he attacked it. Marketplace, he attacked it. Politics, he attacked it. Every angle has been attacked. And he attacked the church too. Is that not true? So, now the church is rising out of all of those things. And we're saying it's time to take over back. It's time to create a dominance back in our own area. We may not dominate the whole world. But we're going to dominate our own turf. The area of our own influence. We're not going to let the enemy dominate. We are going to dominate. If you believe that, say loud amen. Amen. And that's what this new year is about. It's a pivotal year in God's economy. Unrest in the nations will continue. God's power is waiting to be poured out. Massive harvest this year. Plan for it. Satan will try his best to put God's power to, sorry, try his best, but God's power will outclass him. Can I hear an amen? Amen. Harvest of nations and souls. More souls, more nations, more power in 2014. More victories, more praying, more challenges, more growth and progress. More miracles. I said more miracles. I said more miracles. How many of you are ready for the miracles? Be upstanding right now and let's press into those miracles today. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We receive miracles after miracle after miracle. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for what we have heard. We thank you for your program, and we agree with you, Lord, that what you want to come bring to pass, we say, let it be in Jesus' name. Go ahead and talk to God right now.